what we're really talking about when we talk about red is saying to communities in, 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 in the rainforest countries, if you don't chop your rainforest down, we'll give you the carbon that would, uh, will give you, we'll pay you for the carbon that remains stored in that forest and, and what would otherwise be released had, the, had that forest been chopped down. Now, one of the things about avoided deforestation is that we're dealing with countries like PNG, Indonesia, Malaysia, where there's a long history of illegal logging and also of, of unfortunately, corruption in, in that logging sector. And um, in order to get people to agree to protect their forests, you really then need to, as I think Murray said, you need to pay them. And so the deal is, is that if you agree to lock your forests up and we'll work with you to do that, what we will do is, is we'll pay you a revenue stream for the carbon that's stored in return for, for keeping it. Now, one of the things that, one of the tricks about this is that or not tricks, one of the rules is that the carbon must stay there for a minimum really of 100 years, if not forever. And so we're not talking about locking the forest up for a year or two, we're talking about long-term um, lock-up. And there's a lot of people who say, well, that, the very difficulty with that is that there'll be increasing pressures to chop the forest down in 20, 30 years, you, so you need the revenue to continue to flow. And there'll be corruption, etc. So one of the things that these projects can do, apart from just putting structures in place, is also to create better governance to try to reduce corruption and to try to get systems in place that will ensure forests um, remain. The challenges that we've had with these sorts of projects on the ground though is that when you go to somebody and say, um, if you normally, you have, you have a rainforest area, you would go and, and if somebody would come in and say, say, we'll pay you right now today money up front if you agree to, to give us a, to, to, to log your rainforest or if you agree to, to, to give us a mining concession. The problem with a lot of the, the trading markets is that it all relies on regulation and laws coming into force. So while the UN is arguing about when and how red should be included, and Australia's taken a real lead in putting various proposals forward, when you go to a local community and say, we will, we will basically lock up the forest for you, we'll give you some money for that, I say, that's great, okay, well, where's the money? Well, we're waiting on the international laws to come into place to create a market to give you, you to, to give you revenue. Because at the moment, the only people who are really investing in this in a significant way are, are, are really investment banks and some other on, entrepreneurs in the view, in the hope that these red credits will become a value in the future. So one of the challenges with the, where we are at the moment in the whole global framework is that we're trying and we're waiting for, for the law to come into place.